Under Narendra Modi's third term as Prime Minister, India is gearing up to hit China where it hurts. Multiple reports suggest India is gearing up to reignite the Tibet independence debate on the global stage. Indian Army has prepared an extensive list and the Modi government has reportedly given its nod to rename 30 places in occupied Tibet. Now, she's China has a habit of renaming foreign places. I am just surprised she's CCP hasn't claimed Antarctica as Chinese territory or maybe even planet Mars simply because it looks red. Now, some of you may have seen reports that renaming places in Tibet is India's tit for tat for China, inventing new names for internationally recognized Indian territories in border state of Arunachal Pradesh. However, that is not the complete picture. India's counter to China is far bigger and if it gains international support, then China could face a renewed push to vacate PLA from Tibet, a country it occupied by force in 1959. India and China are two nuclear-armed neighbours, often dangerously flirting with armed conflict, just like Garlan Valley clashes in 2020 or the foil Chinese incursion in Arunachal a year later. But here's the thing, India and China are not neighbours. For thousands of years, India and Tibet have been peaceful neighbouring Himalayan countries with strong cultural bonds. In fact, one of Hinduism's holiest sites, the Kailash Mansarovar mountain, lies in Tibet, while there are tons of Tibetan monasteries in India, including the historic Tawang Monastery in Arunachal. Tibet is a huge country. It has an area equal to Germany, Poland, the United Kingdom and Italy combined. Tibet long acted as a buffer between the Indian and Chinese civilizations. However, that changed in 1959 when Mao unleashed the PLA in Tibet. Even today, the Tibetan spiritual leader Dalai Lama lives in India along with 120,000 Tibetan refugees who cheered Indian army convoys as they headed to LAC after the conflict with China. India now wants to remind global powers how they have abandoned the Tibetan cause for cheap Chinese products and cheap labour. That being said, how is India renaming 30 places in Tibet different from what China is doing with Arunachal? And what exactly is India renaming? Firstly, the Indian Army has prepared the list after thorough research and help from research institutions including the Asiatic Society in Kolkata. These are original Tibetan names found in historical Tibetan and Indian texts and not the invented names CCP issued after occupying Tibet in 1959. Included in this list are 11 villages, 12 mountains, a lake, four rivers and a mountain pass among others. Historical context for these places has been established since before the Chinese occupation. So what does India hope to achieve by renaming these regions? China wants the world to forget Tibet. CCP's goal is for Tibetan culture and identity to be exterminated. With this move, New Delhi is showing that it will not abandon the Tibetan people. India is reminding the world that Tibet had a rich history before the six and a half decades of Chinese illegal occupation. The issue is as important as the Taiwan question, the illegal Nine Dash Line and even the issue of PLA spy ships in the Indian Ocean. It is a question of an entire people and culture. Tibetans themselves have been shouting that China is eradicating their culture. But sadly, the world has maintained a painful silence, accepting CCB bullying for the price of cheaper shoes from Chinese factories. Today, the world is paying the price with China threatening an invasion of Taiwan, bullying Philippines in the South China Sea, claiming Japanese islands and rejecting all maritime rights of ASEAN nations. Now, some might argue that India too is guilty. After all, former Indian Prime Minister Vajpayee signed a declaration with Chinese Premier Wei Jiabao in 2003 acknowledging Tibet or Shizang as Chinese territory. The declaration was a hope for lasting peace. However, China soon backstabbed India. CCP itself violated mutual understanding with New Delhi when in 2015 it launched the CPEC project, which passes through Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, which legally remains Indian territory under illegal Pakistani military occupation. If China can violate India's sovereignty with CPEC, then dare to rename Indian places in Arunachal Pradesh, then India is well justified to give historical names to Tibetan locations and give support to the Tibetan cause. India is simply reminding the world of Tibetan identity. After all, there is no Shizang, but only Tibet. China has been itchy with the Tibet question, not just with India, but even the United States of America. In 2020, former President Donald Trump-led US Congress passed a resolution acknowledging the right of the Tibetan people to elect their next spiritual leader after the current Dalai Lama. 
CCP reacted harshly. Beijing also claims the right to appoint its own leader for the Tibetan people. China remains wary of New Delhi. After all, under an assertive Modi, India is the biggest challenger to Chinese bullying and aggression, not just across the LSE, but the entire Indo-Pacific. When Prime Minister Modi inaugurated the Sela Tunnel connecting Tawang, Beijing warned New Delhi to, quote, cease any actions that complicates the boundary issue. Even recently, a Chinese embassy spokesperson wrote on Platform X that the border dispute should be, quote, handled properly, adding that a stable relationship is in the interest of both countries. However, it seems the Indian government has made up a tactical decision to counter China diplomatically on a global stage. India's External Affairs Minister, as Jay Shankar, after taking oath, said his priority will be to find a solution to the border issue with China. But it seems lasting peace can only be found when China vacates Tibet and India once again shares a border with its peaceful neighbour, free from Chinese occupation. Rest assured, it remains a dream and will not be easy. Xi Jinping is more likely to order the PLA to go to war rather than relinquish control over this vast, resource-rich region. But you too can have your say. Is it time to end the so-called One China policy? Is it time for the world to once again support Tibet? Leave a comment, hit the like button and subscribe to InConnect News.